Hello and welcome to today's edition of Your Questions Answered with Father Gruner. I'm John Venneri. In this program, we take the questions that you send us via email. Father answers them. We have discussions about them. And please continue to send us these questions at questions, questions at thefatimacenter.com. Today, we have someone who said, uh, while many of those living during the time of our Lord's crucifixion believe that he was dying on the cross, uh, many believe that he was, it was only the execution of a criminal, did the devil know, did Satan know, through his superior intellect, that our Lord's death on the cross was, in fact, a defeat of evil? Well, first of all, I think that a lot of people take those women on the way to the crucifixion who were weeping for him. And uh, I think there's other people that knew that it wasn't, but it was certainly externally carried out as if it was the crucifixion. But even Pilate himself said, I'll wash my hands uh, of, the, of this. In a, uh, so he was, Pilate himself, his judge who sent him, said he's not guilty. So, I mean, and that was done before the crowd. But of course, there's the willful ignorance and the willful hatred of these people to call for it. And some of them were converted after Pentecost. But all the point is that, so many of them, if not all of them, had to know that it wasn't the, the, just the execution of a criminal who deserved his fate. So, and, and, and a number of them acknowledge that. Uh, so, I'd like to just that first of all. Did Satan know that his death was a defeat of evil? He certainly learned after the fact what, what happened. I mean, so, he, so did he learn by spirit? He learned certainly by being a, a, a spirit and living in a spiritual world. He would, he would learn that. Now, did he learn that before uh, the, the crucifixion or during the crucifixion? I think, I think the unwritten question here is if the devil knew that by our Lord's crucifixion, that his, his kingdom, his evil kingdom would be overthrown, then why would he incite the crowd and why would he incite the Pharisees to crucify our Lord? So the, the implication is, is that the devil didn't fully know. Well, I think the implication is just two things. First of all, uh, he, I, when did he come to the realization? Was it when, I mean, why would he put it into the heart of Judas, as it says in scripture, to uh, betray Christ? You know, and uh, and then why would he incite these? So he didn't know that it was the overthrowing of his kingdom at the moment they did these things. But he came to realize it certainly by the death of Christ because all sorts of things happened even in his world. Among other things, he saw the dead rising and going through Jerusalem. I mean, these things didn't happen for no reason at all. And and he could certainly figure it out by then. But at some point, uh, he, 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 uh, he two things. One, first of all, he, he, although he's, he's very intelligent, not to take anything away from him, he's also, he's also blinded by his, his jealousy and his mm -hmm. hatred of God and his hatred of man, for that matter. And here's a, I mean, Christ is more than a man, but he is a man, and he's a good man, and for him to be able to, you know, have this, this, uh, this terrible chastisement, punishment on him, he, he, for his, because of his hatred of man, he'd love to do that, if he can get away with it. And God allowed him to do it for our so uh, He came to that realization too late, but he, but he certainly didn't he, didn't. he wouldn't have done that. Would he have done it? Uh, you know, what is what is jealousy, hatred of man, and jealousy of of anyone's good fortune and all the rest? Would he have seen anyway? God knows. I don't know the exact balance of what drives him and how far he would allow his reason to when he had this. God knows. But certainly he knew by his superior intelligence very early on after the, at, at the death of Christ or shortly before that, that, uh, that it was. Yeah, I, see, I seem to remember reading in uh, the revelations of uh, Mary of Agrita. Yes. And I'm somewhat neutral regarding Mary of Agrita. I don't promote them or, or I don't, you know, I certainly can't say anything bad against it because they're approved by the church. Yeah. But, um, but in there it does say uh, that uh, according to these uh, revelations that uh, the devil did not know yeah. Well, uh, the full extent of, of, of what was happening when he was when pushing, he was them, towards pushing them towards it was and when Christ died that's when it was revealed to him yeah. and that's when he saw the you know as if, if we can speak this this way the the the, uh, the folly of his actions yes. and the fact that he that he was instrumental in and bringing about his own defeat yes which is which is part of the nature of, of evil persons anyway they well, usually bring number about. one and number two God God uh, in his own way. I mean, it, it, a man, an evil man is trapped by the work of his own hands, it says the Psalms. And a man, a, a pit that he digs to trap his enemy is the one that he, he himself falls into. I mean, these are, and you, and you see the hand of God in, you know, in various things that it's the very boasting 
uh, perhaps you'll talk about it, the very boasting of a man who's in the wrong place and got there wrongly that brings him down. Mm -hmm. I can think of an example I don't want to say today, but I can think of one. And it's, it's the same kind of thing that, and it's that very, well, someone used the example of Thomas Cromwell, who was all powerful and all the rest of it, but some tiny green in his kidney or somewhere brought, brought, him, brought about his death and brought about the, the complete ruin of all his his castles in the air and so forth. But it was a tiny little thing that was, you know, a nothing, so to speak, except it was big enough to bring him down. And you know, that's the kind of thing. So God uses uh, these kind of things. And so the defeat of the devil, uh, God, God likes to do these kind of things. It was his own cunning and intelligence that, that destroyed him. Well, we have that in the Magnificat, too, yeah. that he is... Uh Put down the mighty from their thrones. Put down the mighty from their and, thrones. And, 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 and exalted the lowly. And, and that's, that's exactly the devil is the mightiest from the thrones and he's, and God he puts him down. And, and certainly, he, even a great cost to himself for love of us. Which is, so uh, I, think, uh, I think we've covered that. And uh, of course, we thank, we thank our Lord every day for, uh, I remember an, an old, um, an old uh, Eastern Rite priest, I mean, his name was Father Holy. But it wasn't spelled holy like the Holy Sacrament. It was there was a W in there and I think an extra L. But he said something wonderful and I never forgot. He was like a, he was I must say, he must have been in his early eighties when I met him, and he was like a little child. He said, I, "I thank God every day for my baptism. Yeah. I thank God every day for my baptism." And these are basic things that we're talking about: the redemption and yeah. and the death on the cross. And I'm reminded of Father Holy saying. You know, to thank God every day for these things. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So anyway, that is, uh, that is all for today's program, and we will see you on the next episode. Thank you.